On this episode, we discuss Olaplex a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And clipper cutting a lot. Lots of clipper cuts, lots of Olaplex. <laughs> all the clipper cuts and all the Olaplex. Here we go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Two, three, two, three, two, three. What's up, guys? Welcome to the vlog. I got Thad Bull and I's with me. Yep. And we are going to answer your questions. So this is the Q&A portion of the week. Thank you guys so much for submitting your questions. We're going to get started. This is going to be a pretty short episode. So, But very informative. Yes. Right. <laughs> you don't even know the questions. Oh, yeah, but I know it's going to be very informative. <laughs> you just oh, Okay, cool. All right. So <laughs> <I have> faith, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, all these questions came from Instagram. So thank you guys for submitting those. All right. So the first question is from Claire McFarlane hair on instagram uh she says do you have any plans to do some international trade shows and education like in new zealand or hair expo in australia time to be very informative and say yes <laughs> yeah we i bucket list uh, it's definitely on my bucket list i would like to definitely go to australia definitely go to new zealand New so during the, during the if warm anybody's season. in charge of those shows, let's make that happen. And let, let's have it happen during the warm season because I do hear that New Zealand can get a little cold. Yeah. I don't know like a whole lot about New Zealand except for that it's supposed to be the more awesome version of Australia because nothing there wants to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Like sharks? Shark, uh, Australia has all of the world's most dangerous things. Sharks, spiders, <laughs> snakes, like you name it. And they're all on the endangered list, so you're not allowed to kill them. You have to call an exterminator. I'm sorry. That's self-defense. <laughs> Are you okay? I will be, <laughs> as long as I see it first. <laughs> All right. So, so here's the deal. So, if you are, if you have anything, so basically, what's happening now is you'll see different companies because uh, what I've noticed about the hair shows now, they don't know who's popular and who people want to see. So, oh. what they're doing is they're posting um, and asking people to vote on who they want to see, and they're just saying put any name. So, what I would say is put. Our Matt, names. Matt Beck and the Free Salon Education Team. Yeah. All of us, please. Yeah. Start, <laughs> start submitting that and you'll see us in quite a few different places. The reason you don't really is because, well, I'm actually, I mean, we're at shows, but yeah. just the U.S. shows. So um, definitely start talking about it and people will start bringing us there. See, All right. First question. Very informative. Very informative. Stylist uh, Medalia, I'm going to say. How does Continuum which I don't know how to pronounce that either, compared to Olaplex. Um, it all right. So <laughs> here's one thing I want to tell you. So I did some research. I've never used this product, Continuum. I, I'm guessing that's how it's spelled, C-O-N-T-I-N-U-U-M. I have really no idea. What Continuum. It. Yeah. So um, I know Jen Aitken, um, Atkin, uh, supports Atkin. this. Atkin, yeah, no. she supports it. What we know about Olaplex is that they have everything uh, patented and copyrighted and stuff along those lines, so they can't have like the same formula. Yeah, they can't have the same formula, and it's all about rebuilding bonds. So um, this one says that Continuum is for stylists and colorists as a salon treatment that could be added to color. What's unique about this hair uh, restructuring product is the fact that it could be used in all color services, not just lightning. Well, already right there is wrong information because Olaplex can be used in everything that you do and they recommend putting it in everything that you do because no matter if you're coloring hair or you're lightening hair with bleach, you're breaking down bonds. Yeah. So even if you put water on the hair, you're breaking down bonds. So really, Olaplex should be in everything that you do um, to keep the hair nice and healthy. I'm definitely a, a big fan of sticking with the original on this. Um, like Thad said, Olaplex has patents. They, they created their formula. No one can use that exact formula, so they're uh, creating a knockoff. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're okay, but why not just go with Olaplex, um, who I came mean, up with it? I mean, look at Toyota from China. It's not any good. Toyota? Yeah, China's known for, like, like, like they'll have, like, similar cars to the United States and, like, the rest of the world, but... They're like slightly off. It's like when you uh, buy a handbag from a flea market. Oh, okay. Like they look like at a far glance, they look like they could be it. But as you're getting closer, you're like, that thing's too big or that thing's too small. I don't think it's small. quite probably that. 
You know what I mean? Like, like I, I'm sure there's really like legit chemists that put together this. Product. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, that, that's more sarcasm and ha ha ha. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I don't think it's quite Toyota, but it is definitely <laughs> like uh, it's definitely. I would go with the original. Why not uh, stick to it? Maybe it's a little bit more expensive. I have no idea, but. Um, it, you make so much money off having Olaplex in your salon that I can't imagine why spending the money on Olaplex and not the the other versions that followed after Olaplex. Um, it just wouldn't make sense to me. Yeah. But that's not to say that someday there might be something cool. I don't know. But for now, that's that's my take on it. Yeah. Um, all right. Are the results of... Here's another question from Bobby Showtime here. I love that name. Um, are the results of Olaplex permanent or is it something that you have uh, to use forever. So, Bobby, just to, so that we understand like what Olaplex is, Olaplex is a, it allows the, there to be bonds to be multiplied in a color process. So when they would normally break down a lot of bonds, it helps multiply the bonds so that not as many bonds break. That's not really something, so that's gonna keep the hair healthy till the next time you color it. The next time you color it, you gotta use Olaplex again because it's because then if you didn't use it, you're breaking down those bonds that you just rebuilt. Yeah. It's like going out in the rain uh, with a umbrella. Yeah. Right? You Dirt. don't get wet that time, but if you go out in the rain again, you don't have your umbrella, you're going to get wet. I like that analogy. Thanks. That works. All right. Um, how long did it take to, for you to get comfortable with clipper cuts, and do you have any tips for a recent beauty school graduate on how to get better? Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Practice. Um, I think comfortable with clipper cutting, I guess it depends on what type of clipper cutting you're talking about. There's still phases of clipper cutting, phases of scissor cutting, phases of everything in hair that I'm not comfortable with. Yep. So I just keep practicing, keep learning. Um, I think it's more about not the clipper and it's understanding the hair and the density and the formation of the hair, all of those things play a bigger role in the, than the tool that you're using. Yeah, because so, you can do the same clipper cut on one person and have somebody else come in and use the exact same guard pattern, if yep. you would, and it's going to come out completely differently. Like You might have the one down pattern, and then you look at the other one, and you're like, why are there so many lines? I did the exact same thing. Yeah, that's why it's so frustrating when you go to a hair show and um, you know people want to see a specific haircut or... Um, when I talk about posting on YouTube a celebrity haircut and why it, I have a hard time doing that because I think a lot of people take it so literal that they will do that exact mm -hmm. technique on every single person and every single person needs to be different based on their density formation and what, so on and so and forth. that's why dry cutting is your signature. Yeah. So, all right, cool. I hope that helps. Um, I th I'm going to have to say all these uh, answers have been 110% informative. You like it? Yep. I'm all right, good. cool. I'm good. Uh, I, I'm, I stick with my seal of approval. All right. Um, I feel like these people fed off of each other's questions. So <laughs> Stace Face, awesome, uh, 75 asks, what is the best way to blend clipper cuts? Um, I struggle with the dreaded line. So um, do we have the master? So... Grab a Master Series and that other Andis Clipper, the Supra. So, I have a, I have a, is the best answer I can give you without, you know, talking to somebody that does a lot of clipper cutting. I do a, a good amount of clipper cutting on my guys, but I do a lot of clipper over comb um, and a lot of different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Clipper over comb, scissor over comb, things like that. I don't do a lot of tight fades. So, this is the Super ZR Clipper that we've talked about before. Thank you, Andis, for sending uh, this to us. It has detachable metal blades. Now, most people um, have one clipper as their go-to clipper, right? So the problem with that is I there's sometimes I can blend every line out with this clipper, mm -hmm. right? You, you, with those ones, you really have to have like your like rock and roll like, like yeah. down. Yeah, so you have to almost be able to clipper cut and lift off of the head and have a steady hand. It's okay. very difficult with the metal blades yeah. because there, there's such a jump in each level, each step. So you need to have one of these, um, the detachable blades if you want, because we like it for the power and all of that. But then you need to have um, a clipper with this little arm on it. Now this is the Andis Master Series with this cool, I forget where we get these covers from. 
Yeah, uh, it's like some guy on Instagram. I think it's like Funk something. Yeah, Funk Customs or something. Yep. But uh, this is it's just a this is the Andis Master series. Uh, we got the black edition, and then we put the gold plate on the front, um, really just for a look. But most of the time, it's pure silver. Um, but it has this arm on it, and the arm is what allows you to when you blade when you blend from let's say a one A to a two you're still going to have a little bit of a line. So what you want to do is go in with your uh, Andis Masters, and you got to get used to, because um, there's going to be different blades on different Master Series as well. There's the... Um, the Fade Blade. The Fade the, Blade. There's, there's all a, different like a types. Fat Blade or something like that. Yeah, so you're going to have to figure out which guard, and this is why you practice and why you go through it, which guard fits the best. So if you let's say you put on your Zero Guard, to go in between whatever, um, then you keep moving this level until you work out the line. So you can get shorter and shorter, work out the line, and then you're good to go on that. I think that that's the best answer for that I can give you. Again, I'm not, I don't do tight fades most of the time on people, but I do fade hair. I mean, we're yeah. blending hair all day. So that's what works best for me, having both of those clippers. So I would definitely invest in uh, two different types of yep. clippers, or at least just this one. Yep. And while you're practicing, in order to get like that line out, if while you're practicing you're still not like quite comfortable with it, just run your uh, texturizing shears over, scissor over comb. Yeah. We'll we'll help get that line out uh, until you get the, it down with uh, clippers. Yeah. I I totally agree with you. But I challenge everyone to because this is a way to hide it. Oh, absolutely. Right. That's why I say like, like yeah. while you're practicing. Yeah, while you're practicing, this is a good way to do it. But I think a lot of people jump to this very yeah. quick, and then they end up taking out too yeah. much of the density and not actually creating a nice blended yeah. line. Yeah. So just this this is a good finishing product for removing a little bit of density, maybe on that where mm -hmm. you uh, leave that graduation mm -hmm. when you're blending the hair. So at that heaviest point, just soften the edge with it. So yeah, this is a great tool. All of these are great tools. Definitely, um, if, you, uh, if I had to pick one on the table, it would be this, um, either the Master Series or any clipper that has this lever on it so you can go shorter to long. Um, and then these two after that to kind of power through, um, and definitely get the haircut done quicker and then blending off the top. And it's something that I like to do if like I'm working with like, I anywhere from like a, a one half closed to like a two like closed or up is I like to put that two in and just do the rocking out. Okay. And then just do scissor over comb to like fade out the rest, just like with my shears, like, and just like fade like up the rest nice. instead of like pulling out like three or four different uh, guards. Okay. You can only go so tight with that because you had the comb in between. Right. But if cool. you're comfortable with scissor over comb and you're trying to get into the clipper world, that would be my best bet. Nice. Or that's what worked best for me. All right. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Dahlia, Dahlia Cantrell, who says, it's not a question, but I'd like to take a moment to say thank you for the Matt Beck show. Um, the girls and I watch it every day and binge watch to catch up if we miss some. So it helps them stay on track, keep motivated, and it's definitely good for slower days in the salon. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks for watching it at that point because that's what I believe is the best thing to do when you're not busy in the salon is to study and learn from other people. So good job. Krista Aveda or Chrissy Aveda says how to transition from clipper attachments to doing clipper over comb. Um, I don't think that that's a big deal. Like, I, so let's say you're, you're starting off with a zero and then, then you just switch to clipper over comb. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I can help with that. I don't do a whole lot of clipper over comb. I do a lot of clipper over comb, and sometimes my entire haircut is clipper over comb. So, um, and then, so I, what I do um, when I do clipper over comb is I pick the highest guard. Um, so let's say usually it's like a three and three quarter for the guys that I do. That's actually almost kind of short for them. And then I'll go through and I'll blast through the head, um, get it up to where I want it. And then I'll go through around the edges and clip her over comb just to take it a little bit tighter. Then I'll go trim her over comb, take it a little bit tighter than that, right around the edge. And then my haircut's done. And a lot of my guys come in every two weeks, so um, and just like yours. So because they come in every two weeks, it's such a quick, easy haircut to do. All right. Um, I think we got one more question. Um, Trixie and the world 
asks, how do you cut and shatter triangular bob on a guest with heavy density and hair that's wavy to curly and frizzy? I feel like there's like a lot of issues going on there. Yeah. So that's a tough, that's a tough head to cut. Um, let's say they have heavy density, right? And you want to shatter it. Biggest thing for me is the undercut or um, cutting concave layers on top of longer layers on the top. So let's just say, for instance, I um, wish I had my, my bald mannequin head, but um, let's say, for instance, we want to go underneath the hair. So take out the entire parietal ridge back to the crown, underneath low crown, so that you're taking out that entire top section. Then underneath, you either undercut it or cut shorter layers right at that, um, right at the line at the parietal ridge and in the back underneath the crown, or cut concave layers so you preserve the length in the back, but you collapse the interior and allow those longer layers on the top to fall over, which will give you that shattered look. Um, the fact that the hair is frizzy, that has everything to do with styling, not cutting. So, um, and if it's wavy and curly, I definitely think that that's, I would still stick to that technique because um, it's gonna give you that shattered kind of open curl feel. Absolutely. Um, but just with the frizziness, that's a styling thing. You gotta coach them and teach them how to, how to style the hair. Yeah, they either need to round brush it, use hot tools, something. Right. All right, cool. I think that's it. Do you have anything? Not unless if you can tell me when Rock Allegiance goes on sale. <laughs> I have no idea. I need the time, not the date. All right, cool. So um, I hope that this show helped you guys. Definitely some cool questions. If you have more questions um, or anything, you can post them in the comments below. We'll definitely get them there. Or hashtag the Matt Beck Show on Instagram and Twitter and ask your question that way. Uh, post a fun picture. You can also submit questions, um, video questions if you want through Facebook or something. Um, however you want to do it, just send us the questions and uh, and we'll get them answered for you. Um, follow Thad. Thad Bolnized. And follow us, everything at Free Salon Education. And uh, I wonder how many people actually type in everything at Free Salon Education. I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> All right, guys, cool. So I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed this q and I hope you're enjoying the vlogs. Let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.